And this call is called Busting Through Your Limiting Beliefs That Hold You Back. And uh, it's a really powerful call. I, I actually discovered this process myself about two years ago. And um, like I said, every single year we all go through this, but every single year we all have some things that we want to achieve, that we want to make happen every year. And, and it tends to be around the new year that we're like, you know what, for some reason this year went by fast. These things I, I said last New Year's I was going to make happen and I didn't. Why is that? Why am I not reaching these goals or why did I not make that improvement in my life uh, that I really uh, think that I want to make in my life? And I'm going to walk you through one of the big reasons why that happens. And just like usual, as soon as you have a question, guys, write them down. Okay, write them down. Shoot them through the questions panel if you're watching this live. If you're not watching this live, shoot the question through the comment box below this video on, on the replay page. Uh, that way we can dive in and, in and engage them and help you through the training, help you get the most out of the training. So this training, like I said, is going to be about 60 minutes. Type in your questions as you think of them, not... One, one mistake a lot of people make is they'll think of a question like I'll ask them at the end of the at the end of the call, but don't do that because you'll probably forget them like I do. So type in the questions in the questions box as you think of them throughout the call. I'll dive in and um, and get to them. And like usual, guys, the way that we take notes here at Investor Carrot is not taking notes on concepts, not taking notes on stuff like that because that kind of stuff tends to to go in, in your notepad and you never look at it again. Only take notes today on action items. Take notes on things that you're actually going to do in the next two or three days, okay? That's really where you get the most out of your education is not taking notes on concepts. Take notes on what you're going to do with that concept. So a little bit about me. <clears throat> if, if you guys aren't familiar with me, I'm Trevor Mock, the founder of Investor Carrot. Uh, Investor Carrot's a, a platform for helping real estate investors and small businesses generate more leads online. And we've made some huge improvements, guys, this last <clears throat> week and a half, two weeks. We've got our rent-to-own um, system coming out tomorrow morning. A bunch of cool stuff. But you can hit me up on LinkedIn. There's the URL. And uh, you know, I've generated a, a bunch of leads online. The thing that I'm most proud about is kind of my entrepreneurial journey. And then this is something I'm not really going to go into on this call. But um, as, as soon as as soon as I started to master my mindset, and I'm not going to say that I'm e I have even close to mastered it, but as soon as I started to really focus on my mindset above everything else, um, my mindset above learning tactics for real estate investing, my mindset above learning how to build a business. As soon as I focus on my mindset first on really building a rock solid mindset, then everything else fell into place. Okay, so this call is a mindset call, but it's on one specific thing. And that that mindset carries into all aspects of my life now and in in you know personal business, my relationships, all kinds of stuff. But just like everyone, we all kind of fall off of it every now and we all have things that creep into our minds that kind of block us from where we want to go. And I'm going to share with you guys the, the, the process that I discovered a couple of years ago. So there's me. Uh, this was shoot, this is a, a few years ago in Moab, Utah. I love mountain biking. Um, we've got a bunch of awesome mountain biking trails here around Roseburg, Oregon, where I live. And um, and while we were in Moab, I really made some big strides in my mindset with mountain biking. Because going there, you know, I, I'm not I'm not that advanced of a mountain biker. Okay, um, I love what I do. I, I'm 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 not a huge risk taker as far as you know physical risks like that. Um, yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm not the guy who's going to go over a six foot drop r quite yet, right? But during that during that ride, I, I definitely did some things that were bigger than I would normally do. And here's me going down a little, you know, a little stair step <clears throat> uh, uh, section of, of of the trail of one of the trails that we went on. And if I would have said that, if I would have looked at that, and you know, a week before I headed to Moab. Uh, and said, yeah, I'm going to fly right over that, I probably wouldn't have believed it, okay? So there are certain things holding me back, even in this mountain biking trip, that I had to get over before I went there while I was there to realize that I could do it and really stretch my limits. Um, so there are certain things with, with everything, with business, with relationships, with, with mountain biking in this case, where, number one, yeah, of course, you've got you've to have your fundamentals. i got to know what I need to do on the bike physically to make it over this safely. But also the mindset part of it, if I don't have the mindset part down first, 
the fundamentals and the physical part are only going to take you so far. Same thing with real estate investing. If you focus so much on how to do a deal, how to get leads, how to do this, how to do that, and you're not focusing on the mindset side of things every single day, every morning when you wake up, then things are going to creep into your life. Doubts are going to creep in there. They're going to stop you from making progress in your business and life. So focusing on the fundamentals and tactics and not mindset turns you into this guy. You know, this guy... He started to head down there and he didn't commit fully. Okay, he started to make he started to make the the the, the truck down the hill because he had some fundamentals behind him, but his mindset wasn't there to really help him commit fully and go around that that loop and not fall into the water. So if you want to be the person who is able to commit fully in things in life, relationships, in real estate, in in growing your business with investor care as an example, um, in whatever goals you have, losing weight in this new year or getting in shape or whatever it is. The, the mindset is what helps you commit fully and make things happen, okay? Fundamentals get you to start going over the hump. The mindset's what, what makes you com, uh, commit and make things happen. So you got to master that mindset, guys, and then the fundamentals come after. So the most powerful strategy for expanding your own personal mindset that I've come across, like I said, I came across this uh, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, and it's really simple. I mean, it's like crazy simple. And there's a lot of different things we can all be doing to to expand our mindset. But this one is kind of one that that it's one that that I rely on on a daily basis. And I hear a lot of people, guys, come to me, come to me with these kind of things that they're saying that hold them back. Like, you know, they're saying that that time holds them back. And whatever it is, once again, well, guys, we're not just talking about business. We're not just talking about real estate. We're talking about everything. So I get a lot of people saying, you know, I want to do this, but I don't have enough time to do it. I want to, you know, I want to build my websites or I want to drive leads or I want to get in shape or I want to do this, do this, do this, but I don't have the time to do it. Those things are holding them back. You know, um, I want to start a business, but I don't have an idea or I, I want to write content for my site, but I don't have the ideas to write it. So I just tend to not do it. Okay. So that holds them back. Money, guys, this is a huge thing that holds a lot of people back, especially with business. I don't have enough money to start my business. You need money to make money. You know, all those all those things that were taught through society, through, through our upbringing, that are just embedded into our minds that hold us back in certain, in certain things. Uh, on a weekly basis, I get people, you know, asking about um, how, to, how, how to fund their deals because they're like, you know, I, I don't have any money. I don't have good credit. So I... You know, how am I supposed to go out there and fund my deals? That's where their roadblock is. Um, money is never a roadblock, guys, but but a lot of people let things like this hold them back. Experience. If you're a newer investor, if you're new in anything, um, I'm going to walk you through, guys, an example of myself that I had a big limiting belief in 20, you know, in this last year that I blasted through using this process. But experience holds a lot of people back. You know, I don't have enough experience to do this or people aren't going to take me seriously because I haven't been doing this for very long or I've never done a deal before so they're not going to take me seriously. Things like this hold people back. Time, ideas, money, and experience are four big ones. And every single thing, guys, fitness. Some people feel that, that they can't walk into a gym and be confident in there because they don't have the experience you know, uh, to, to make it look like they know what they're doing on the equipment or to know what they're supposed to be doing training. Okay. Same thing or money. I, I, I can't get in shape because it's expensive to go to the gym. Well, there's a lot of ways to get in shape without money. Okay. So anyway, guys, so these people tend to tend to keep spinning their wheels and not make progress like they want. And what I mean by these people, that's everyone guys. We're, everyone is included in that in, in, in some little limiting beliefs in our life. Okay. And they tend to not make progress that they want to make. Uh, they see other people making progress who started even after they started. They get discouraged. Things seem not to come as easy to them as, as others, they think. And many people get discouraged and give up or, or give it kind of a half-assed effort and say, it, yeah, it, it, it must not work. And that, that's kind of what a lot of people do. And if you look at real estate investing or being an entrepreneur, you look at the stats of the success and failure ratios. I don't remember the last... The last number that came out, but something like 90% of all small businesses fail within the first couple of years, right? Um, so that right there is a limiting belief that people have immediately when they're starting a company. Or if you're starting a real estate investment company, you know, you see all the people online that are saying, oh, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. So immediately you're letting that creep into your mind going, well, it must not work out there. I'm going to give it a try. So you're already disadvantaging yourself with the limiting belief. So you're, I guarantee you're not going to succeed with that, Okay. So on the flip side of this, 
here's some things that fuel successful people or fuel people who are successful in doing certain things. Time. Ideas. Time. I have all the time in the world. Look at all the time I've got to, to, to go out and do this stuff. Look at the people that I can leverage to get more time. Uh, look at, you know, time is a huge, huge asset for us. Ideas. You know, gosh, you know, look, I, I get ideas every five seconds. I get so many ideas, I don't know what to do with them. Um, you know, that, that helps fuel me. I, I'm, I'm an idea guy. I have so many darn ideas for businesses, guys, that two years ago I was swimming in too many ideas that actually held me back. Um, now I focus on fewer ideas and let other people run with my ideas. Money. So if you guys are seeing that little correlation here, these are the exact same things that I talked about earlier that are holding some people back. These things are empowering people and, and fueling people. Money. Okay, man, yeah, I, I don't have money, but I need it. My back's against the wall. This is motivation for me to go out there and get it. Okay, so I don't have to worry about money. Experience. You know, if you look at it, if, if you don't have experience, if you don't have a deal, look at that as a positive. I'm going to show you guys ways to, to make that happen really, really quickly and easily. So a lot of people use these exact same things to fuel them. And if that looks familiar, like I said, it was from a previous slide. So how can the same things fuel one person and hold another person back? It's the same darn things, guys. People are just looking at it from, from a different direction. Um, so what I'm going to walk through in, in, in this training, guys, once again, is, is how to identify limiting beliefs. Because this right here, how, how the same things can fuel one person or hold another person back, it all boils down to your beliefs. Your belief system that you grew up with, your belief system that you hold right now, and there's certain beliefs that empower you and help you do great things, and there's certain beliefs that hold us all back, okay? And this call is about finding those, uh, identifying the beliefs that are holding us back and limiting us and reversing them so, they're, they're, so they empower us instead. And that's a hugely powerful thing, guys, in life, in every aspect of life. So there's an invisible force that I mentioned before that, that really controls everything in life. Most people haven't thought about it. I, I did this call two years ago, guys, to to uh, modified it for you know to, to bring it up to date. But I did this call two years ago, and people were blown away by this process. They they'd never thought about beliefs in this way and how much beliefs really control you behind the scenes subconsciously. So beliefs, there's there's no such thing as a true belief. First of all, okay. And this might not make sense the first time I said it, but it will make sense here in a bit. So there's no such thing, guys, as a true belief. A belief is a belief, okay? Um, if you believe that that the color green is an awesome color, that doesn't make it true that, that it's an awesome color. It makes it your belief that that's an awesome color, okay? Vice versa, if you think running up this hill is is gonna is going to break your leg, it doesn't make it true, okay? It just makes it a belief of yours, and those beliefs dictate how successful you're going to be in whatever that belief that belief is about. So think about that for a second, guys. Think about that. There's no such thing as a true belief. There are just beliefs, okay? And beliefs are either limiting or they're empowering you, okay? Beliefs are either limiting you in what you do and holding you back from doing what you want to do, or they're empowering you to do what you want to do. And that's something you need to think about. And, and, and after, you, after you get done at this call, you're going to think about life in a totally, totally different way. And, and you're going to question things around you right now and question things that you've even held as beliefs for years or decades that, that are holding you back from going to where you want to go. Okay. So our whole aim here is, is helping you identify the beliefs that are limiting. And we need to turn those around so they empower you instead. Okay, so you in your own mind really choose to make these beliefs true or false subconsciously. Okay, so a lot of us we're going throughout the day, or all of us we go throughout the day and we see things, and immediately we have little beliefs or thoughts, or maybe even subconscious things that that lead us to believing something that that make it true or false. Okay, there's as an example, there's a lot of drive-through coffee shops here in Oregon, uh, a couple of the big franchises across the country started here within you know an hour's drive here one of them is called dutch bros it's a hundred million dollar year company drive through coffee shop a lot of people think that their coffee is better than this other one okay it's not it, it's it's not it's the same darn coffee you know they, they they roast it the same way they do the whole same thing but these people keep going back and going back and going back to dutch bros rather than the small mom and pop ones because they really believe that it's better coffee they believe that that experience is better whether it is or not 
You know, there's, there's subconsciously they have these things that dictate what you're doing. So let's talk about limiting beliefs versus empowering beliefs. And since we know that they're so powerful, I think it's a really good thing to do. So how do beliefs relate to business, guys? How, how, do, they, how do beliefs relate to business? How do they relate to your business, uh, to real estate investing, to um, anything else? I know we have a lot of people on here who are entrepreneurs who own multiple different companies, insurance companies. Uh, they're real estate brokers. They're, um, you know, they do all kinds of different things. How do your beliefs relate to your business? Um, and then as we go through this, guys, you can you can really tie those into other parts of your life too: fitness, health, relationships, um, your your own personal confidence, stuff like that. So tell me, and and be honest with yourself here in this process, guys. And like I said, this call is only going to be about sixty minutes. It might even be quicker. I'm going to do a little bit of stuff here. Uh, in, in a bit, but it's going to be really powerful. So tell me, and, and be insanely honest with yourself. Do any of these beliefs on the next page creep into your mind ever or have they ever? Um, as, as I show them to you, you might get a couple that pop up like, yeah, you know, I, I kind of think that or kind of believe that or, you know, that's a belief that I have had. Um, and some of, them, some of them you've probably never even thought of. And that's the thing about beliefs is that a lot of times the beliefs are so subconscious that we don't even know that these beliefs are holding us back, okay? Once again, a belief to most people is that it's true. Like, if once again, if you believe that the color red is an awesome color, then to you that's true, right? So it's really tough sometimes to recognize that these beliefs dictate certain things in our lives. So traditional business beliefs, all the good ideas, all the good deals and ideals are already taken. That's so, that's a belief that a lot of people have. Okay, you have to you have to have money to make money. This one's been around for as long as money has been here. That people really get into that that belief set of you got to have money to make money. Okay, especially in real estate where people are talking about doing uh, deals that that involve a lot of money. They think you, know, you got to have money to make money. Okay, um, I, I'm living proof that you don't. I did my first deal with 600 bucks in the bank account when I was 21 years old and in college. I didn't have any money. I couldn't get a bank loan. I did my first deal. Um, you must be an expert in an area to really grow a business. So, um, you know, we, we have people, as an example, with investor care, they're newer investors. You know, they they don't put their information. They don't put their bio. They don't they don't put testimonials. They don't do blog posts on their website because they think, well, shoot, I've never done a deal, so I'm not an expert in this. I have to be an expert to to tell people I'm a real estate investor. That's holding them back. Okay. Starting a business is risky and requires an element of luck. Is this true? I know a lot of people, even business, even business coaches and business teachers that I know personally that, that talk about how much is involved, you know, how much how much luck is involved in business. And while the, yeah, there is there is an element of luck, you make your own luck. Okay. And that's that's what we're talking about here, guys. We're reversing. So if if luck is a limiting belief for you, and we're gonna, I'm going to walk you through here in a bit how to identify limiting beliefs and the five questions to, to, to bust through them. But if luck is one of yours, I have people all the time, I, I actually had a, a guy email me yesterday here locally, and he's been really down on his luck, you know, and um, and he, he even uses the words, I'm down on my luck, and you know, everyone, everyone, uh, you know, every, every, everyone, everyone's luckier, more fortunate than I am. Of course, if that's your belief, that's going to dictate what happens to you. So that's a limiting belief for him. Starting a business requires you to sacrifice family and friends to succeed. Starting a business is a full-time job. A lot of people think that just because everyone else in the world says you got to work a 40-hour week to say that you're working, and your family, if you're only working 20 hours a week, they think that you're a slacker, you know, um, is that a limiting belief where you're working 40 hours a week just because you think you have to? I have to look professional to be successful. This is one that I had for a while, and... Uh, and there's a certain degree to you know, a certain degree of truth to it, but uh, most of this is all bunk right there. Uh, no one will want to work with me because I'm not experienced yet. That's a huge one. Bigger investors get all the best deals. Uh, that's a huge one that I see people coming to, uh, to, uh, across this all the time in real estate. You have to be a techie to succeed online with the internet. This one, guys, with carrot, we get this. 15 times a week where people are like, hey, you know, I'm I'm not very technically inclined or you know, I'm not sure if this is right for me because I'm not a techie. The thing is, as, as you Investor Care members know, you don't have to be a techie when, when you're with Investor Care. We're the techies, okay? So as long as you can bust through that limiting belief, like I'm going to show you guys how, then you leverage other people <clears throat> and other resources, <clears throat> excuse me, to get past that. <clears throat> 
it's expensive and hard to hire people to help me grow. Um, apparently, I don't know how to spell. It's cheaper for me just to do it myself than to hire great people to, 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 to work for me. This is one, guys, that I had for years. They held me back big time. Huge, 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 huge. SEO, search engine, search engine optimization is hard. Getting traffic is hard because I don't know how. Since I'm not a techie, I should just stick with offline stuff and bag the online stuff. Marketing is an expense. This is a huge limiting belief, guys. You see all the time whenever, an, whenever, whenever the economy goes down, most small businesses tend to cut back on their marketing because they see it as an expense rather than the fuel to, to grow their company. And on and on. There's so many traditional business beliefs that, that we all have, that we all learn. Um, that, that could be empowering us or could be holding us back. So several of those are things that you've consciously or subconsciously thought in the past week, I bet, right? So if, if you can, if you can in the questions panel right now, just shoot through yes, you know, shoot through some of those beliefs I just went through or hit me with a quick yes if, if you have experienced or are experiencing some of those beliefs, okay? Um, please shoot, shoot them through there, guys. I just want to, I want to kind of get a gauge for, for where people are in their mindset and stuff like that. So if these beliefs that creep into our minds come from our environment that we came from, our, you know, our environment that we grew up with, our parents, our friends, um, our environment we surround ourselves with now, so our friends, our colleagues, our family, um, it can be really hard to recognize a belief that's holding you back. So I'll show you how to identify limiting beliefs on the spot, and that's really step one of this process. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of those limiting beliefs again. So once again, all the good deals and ideas are already taken. You got to have money to make money. You have to be an expert in an area to really grow a business there. So look at these guys. And here, here's this one too. Once again, shoot, shoot through the questions panel if you're experiencing or have experienced any of these limiting beliefs right now that hold you back. So when, when you experience any of these feelings, when you experience any of those beliefs, like getting leads online has never worked for me, so I'm skeptical whether it works at all, or... I have to be experienced to have sellers, private lenders, or buyers want to want to talk to me. Um, what you need to do is we need to walk it through this five simple, these five simple questions to reverse and bust through your limiting beliefs. And I initially got these. I got four of these questions, and I made up the, uh, a fifth one on my own to really round it out from a book called Loving What Is: Four Questions That Can Change Your Life by a lady named Byron Katie. You can buy that on Amazon, guys, for I think 11 bucks. Really, really powerful book. But five simple questions to reverse and bust through your limiting beliefs. And this is where you guys are going to want to start writing stuff down. Okay. <clears throat> so first of all, you, you probably, <laughs> first of all, I'm doing the webinar at my house today since it's New Year's. We have the office closed. So you might hear a little bit of family background in the back in, in the background then that right there guys that's a limiting belief that I had that that I had to work in an office to be successful I've got an awesome office but you can see right now I'm working at home with the the kids and the family playing in the, in the next room so my, my brother he works for carrot of course and this is something this was actually a while ago uh, he had a huge 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 limiting belief you know was holding him back from growing his his company athletes brand which is a company that we're that we're pushing forward together. It's a clothing apparel company. We have a bunch of major league baseball players wearing our clothes. We were on MLB.com. We had a live a live uh, major league baseball game. They stopped the you know in, during the broadcast. They mentioned our brand and gave our domain name for a shirt promotion we were giving. We sold a bunch of shirts to him. But he was having a big, big mindset block. And I walked him through these five questions, and then he posted this on, on Facebook. He says, Trevor Mark needs to go on a tour as a motivational speaker, blah, blah, blah. He has a knack for finding that missing link that, that recreates motivation. And the whole knack there, guys, it wasn't anything magical. It was these five questions. Like, that's it. That's it, guys. It was the five questions. I walked myself through these five questions, okay? So... Here's some more limiting beliefs that some people have. You gotta have a good domain to get leads online. You have to have a solid logo to look professional online. You gotta have a business plan to be successful. You gotta have a website to be successful. A company can't run without me. I need total control of my company. Guys, all of these are limiting beliefs that I have had myself, okay? The business plan one, I got rid of that a long time ago, and I haven't written a business plan since college. I'm not saying you shouldn't write one, because there's certain times where you need to write one. Like a, a big lender is probably going to want to see a business plan. Uh, a good domain, I have I've bought some of the worst domains in the world, guys, website domains, 
and and they get a lot of traffic. Okay, so a domain, a good domain is great, but it doesn't have to be there. A solid logo. You don't need a logo for your business. Okay, if you got one, awesome. If you don't, no big deal. You don't need one. Heck, you don't even need a website. I know Investor Carrot. That's what we are: is is providing lead generation websites for real estate investors. And and uh, if I tell people, hey, you don't need a website, it goes against what our product is. But the truth is, you don't. I've got a lot of friends who are really successful investors who don't even have a darn website. They're just out there pounding the pavement, you know, building their buyers list manually and and uh, doing direct mail, and they're they're doing deals. So you don't need a website. A website is just a tool that can help you get where you want to go quicker if that's what you want to do. Um, and a big one that I have, these last two are big ones that I've had and I'm still working through. I haven't perfected them. The company can't run without me and I need total control. Okay, these ones, guys, if you really want to make it to the next level in business, if you want to make it past the, you know, the rat race level of business of just making income and really earn freedom, these last two limiting beliefs are ones that you're going to have to bust through. And like I said, I'm working on that right now. I haven't perfected that, but your company has to be able to run without you in the future if you want to have true freedom from your business, and and you need to let go of control. Okay, so this, these are whole different calls, but just know that that you can recognize these now when they when they creep up once you get to that level. So, step one of this whole process, guys. And I hope I hope up to this up to this point, I hope you've started to think about some beliefs that are already holding you back. Okay, maybe some of the ones I mentioned earlier. Are ones that are that are popping up, and I'm going to hop out of here in a second and dive into the questions panel, and uh, and, and and get some cool stuff going. But and actually, I even set up some like a poll or a survey on here. I've never ran a poll or a survey on a webinar, so I'm going to see I'm going to see how that works. But step one is to write down the beliefs that are holding you back as you come across them every day. Okay, and and th this this really is 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 the hardest part because, like I said, a lot of these beliefs. Are really ingrained in what you do. Okay, I'm going to walk you through one big belief that I had for years that I went through that I squashed this year. Um, you know, and sometimes it may be hard to realize these long held beliefs. Uh, once again, I, like I mentioned, they're holding you back. But if you're not where you want to be in life right now, and you struggle to break through, you're, you're struggling to break through to some goals. You keep on setting these certain goals, or you have this vision in your mind, you keep on not hitting that. Uh, there are definitely beliefs that are the crux of what's holding you back right now. So I'm sure everyone on this call, that's probably the reason you're on this call, everyone on this call has goals they haven't hit. Everyone on this call um, probably has things that you said last year you were going to do or improve in your life that you didn't do or improve in your life. Um, so every single person on this call has limiting beliefs that are holding you back from where you want to be in life. Okay, so let's find those. And you need to reverse them to, in, uh, to empower you instead. So as an example, guys, um, uh, and I meant to go grab a picture off of my Facebook on this, but uh, in ex one that I had this year. Okay, I'm you know I, I've always been an, an athlete. I played baseball in high school and college and stuff, but I've never been a runner. And my wife's a runner. She loves running. She ran her first marathon this last year, and then a half marathon a couple months ago. And um, to me, that's like insanely awesome. Okay, I, I I can't even imagine running a marathon. And right there, that there's a limiting belief that just slipped through as as I'm talking. Right. But going into 2013, um, I, I it, going into 2013, I set an intention. I do this every single year, and this is something you're probably you sh you really should do uh, in the next day or two. Is set a theme for the year. Okay, so my theme for last year was health and fitness. Put health and fitness above everything else, because because in the past I hadn't been doing that. In the past, every all of my goals were always were always business related. Okay. And there's a huge flaw in that because if you don't have health and fitness, if you don't have relationships, then your business isn't going to matter. Okay, the business stuff doesn't matter a bit. So going into 2013, I set a goal to, to make health and fitness my overall thing. And a buddy of mine walked into my office and said, "Hey," and, it, and he he did the same thing the year before. So he did the same thing in 2012. And he got in insanely great shape. He started running when he was never a runner before. He was running long distance, doing trail running, all kinds of stuff. And he walked into my office and said, hey, there's this thing called Tough Mudder. You know, it's one of those obstacle races. You guys have probably heard of those obstacle races where you, you know, go through mud and go over the top of walls and get shocked and all kinds of stuff. Well, the Tough Mudder is the, the biggest one. Okay, the Tough Mudder is the 10 to 13 mile one. I think, I think since Tough Mudder came out, now there's one that is 18 miles or whatever. It's crazy. But the Tough Mudder is the biggest one, and they say it's the toughest, perhaps the toughest event on the planet. That's kind of their tagline. 
right? I mean, you're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And I went and looked at the videos and, and I looked at the obstacles. I'm like, yeah, I, I, can, I can do those obstacles. But the thing that was holding me back was the distance. And I had this, this limiting belief of I can't do a Tough mud race because I can't run 12 miles. I've never ran 12 miles. I've never ran more than three miles at once because uh, I'm not a runner. You know, that, that's what held me back. So immediately when my buddy came into my office and said that, I'm like, nah, it's, it's not going to happen. I was very skeptical that I could even do it. You know, I wasn't confident about it. So I, I felt bad about it, right? So question one. Is, is this belief true? Okay. So when, when I had that belief in my mind, I, I walked myself through this process. Because the thing is, guys, this isn't about eliminating your, this isn't about eliminating your limiting beliefs. Because we're all going to have them. Okay. We all have them every single day. This is about identifying them and reversing them so they empower you instead. So the first question, as soon as that popped in my mind, I'm like, is this really true? And of course... If, if, if you believe that, if that is a belief of yours, then yeah, the, yeah you're going to think that belief is true, right? So once again, going back to the color thing, if you really think blue is an awesome color and you ask, is this belief true? Then like, yeah, the belief's true. I really love blue, okay? So most of the time, your, your, your question of this is going to be, yeah, it's, it's true. That's why I believe this, right? So now, <clears throat> this is where the power comes in. Question number two, is this belief without a shadow of a doubt true? And this this really ups the ante, guys. This one, this question right here, this ups the ante and and makes you prove whether that that belief is true or not. Okay, and I'm going to show you how I proved that it was untrue for me. And this is the key, guys. Without a shadow of a doubt, is that belief without a shadow of a doubt true across the world? Not for you, across the world. So here is my shadow of a doubt example <clears throat> for the tough mutter. Um, Two years ago, I met this guy. His name is Sean Stevenson. You may have heard of him, but uh, he he has a condition. I don't remember what it is, but he's you know he 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 grew. He has a, a skeletal condition. Okay, you can see right there in the picture that that that's just not it's it's not the normal skeleton that that uh, the most people have, right? So he has a skeleton condition, and I met him a couple of years ago at, at an event um, in Costa Rica, actually. And he's one of the most inspiring people that I've ever ever met. And even though he, he has to be in a wheelchair all the time, he can't walk, um, look at him right here. He's got a dumbbell off to, the, off to his right arm, that little shiny thing. That's a dumbbell, guys. He works out every single morning. Look at his, his he has an eight pack in that, in that thing. He works out every single morning. He's got a beautiful wife who is fully, you know, has a fully enabled body. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of people in, in, his, in his state would have a limiting belief that there's no way I'm going to find someone who can love me that kind of thing, right? Um, but he did because he reversed that and, and found someone who can who really loved him and he loved back a lot. And she's an awesome gal. And so this was my shadow of doubt example. If Sean can get up in, the, in every morning, hop out of his wheelchair, go down and work out for 20 minutes, do, do uh, he, he's doing bench presses, he's doing abs, he's doing all the stuff that doctors and everyone says he could not and should not do because his bones and joints don't work very well. So, so he is an empowerful, you know, a very empowering person for me. And right there it says Sean Stevenson, born with fragile bones, three feet tall, wheelchair bound, motiv motivational speaker, earning fifteen thousand to thirty thousand dollars per appearance. He's a popular author, a certified therapist, and he's found his strength for success. Okay, his strength for success, guys, is knowing <clears throat> what limiting beliefs he has and turning them around successfully, okay? So as soon as I saw this, as soon as I remembered this example, I'm like, if Sean can get up and do that every morning, how, how can I not figure out how to run 12 miles, right? So question number three, guys, <clears throat> it, it, is, is, as soon as I said, is, is this right here, is this without a shadow of a doubt true? My answer was no. If Sean can do this and, and if and if all the hundreds of thousands of other people who have ran Tough Mudders can do this, I'm sure most were in worse shape than me, then I can do this. So right there, right away, I know that that limiting belief is not true. Okay. So question number three, let's take it one step further. How does this limiting belief make you feel? So now we know that that belief is not true. Okay. We, we know that that's something that's in our mind. It's a false it's a false belief. It's a limiting belief, right? It's holding us back. So we know it's not true. We know other people in the world have, have done what I was wanting to do. For you guys, 
So what limiting beliefs do you have? So uh, let, let, let's go to the real estate thing. I, I know a lot of people who have a huge limiting belief around money or a huge limiting belief around experience. Um, if, if you think that you can't do deals or because you're new and you're inexperienced and all the, all the good deals go to the experienced and big investors, do you think that ever across the world, do you think that ever across the world someone has been inexperienced and did their first real estate deal and then went on to be, become a successful investor? And the answer to that's obvious. The answer is 100 billion percent yes. I mean, every investor out there has to start with no experience. Okay, so if one of your limiting beliefs is that you lack experience and you don't think sellers, private lenders, all those people will take you seriously, then just know that hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people before you have done exactly what you're looking to do. Okay, so it can be done. It has been done. You just need to get over that belief. On health and fitness, um, you know, if, if you're 70 pounds overweight or let's say you're even 30 pounds overweight and you've tried all kinds of diets and all kinds of things and it's just not working and man, you're just really, really down about it, um, has, has anyone ever in the history of the entire world gone from 100 pounds overweight and got down to their goal weight? Obviously, the answer is yes. We, we see it on the TV shows all the time. It happens probably hundreds of thousands of times, or if not millions to millions of people a year, okay? So no longer, guys, is that a limiting belief for you. You need to recognize once again that it's, it's holding you back. So now let's go back to that limiting belief. Question number three, how does this belief make you feel? Does it make you feel good? Um, you know, I'm, I, I here's this thing right here. So I guess I'm limited to just doing small stuff while my buddies are running marathons. So that was that was how that limit, limiting belief made me feel as soon as I felt it. Right, I'm thinking, man, Chris, my buddy, he signed up for that Tough Mudder, and I've got buddies who are running marathons, and and I'm sitting here, and, and for some reason, I can't do I can't do 12 miles. You know, I I guess I'm just limited to just doing small stuff. Well, my buddies are are running marathons and stuff, and God, that feeling sucks, <laughs> right? That feeling sucks, and and the the thing is, one real great way, a physical way, to recognize if if it's a limiting belief or not is that feeling in the pit of your stomach, like that uneasiness in the pit of your stomach um, about about a belief, okay? Like that right there, I felt absolutely terrible and almost semi-sick in my stomach thinking that, man, I'm limiting myself to this while my buddies are out there doing big stuff. Um, and I'm like, that feels terrible. I don't want to do that, okay? So if if you have that feeling when you're thinking about stuff, if you have the feeling of, you know, when, when you're thinking about, um, you, know, you know, real estate investing is hard, then that doesn't make you feel good. In the pit of your stomach, it makes you feel uneasy. It makes you feel bad. It makes you feel down. It makes you feel less confident in going through and doing what you're going to do. Or same thing, if you're going out there to find, a, you know, the love of your life, um, if, if, in, in, if you have this limiting belief of there's no one out there for me or it's, or it's, or it's hard to find uh, the right person or it's hard to find a person who will love me, how does that feel in your gut? You you know it feels terrible. It feels heavy. It feels it just drags you down, right? So whenever you get that feeling, know that know that know that you're recognizing <laughs> know that you're recognizing a limiting belief right there. There's my daughter in the, in the back door there. So question number four, guys. What would the opposite thought be? Okay, what would the opposite of that limiting belief be? And think about this for a bit. Okay, this this is where this is where reversing that belief comes in. So for me, what I did, and, and this guys, this whole process takes a matter of ninety seconds. Okay, ninety seconds to squash a limiting belief. So as soon as I felt that in my gut, as soon as I felt, man, this isn't right. I don't like. I don't want to live the rest of my life like this, saying that I'm limited to, to, to running a mile or two, or just doing small stuff while my while my buddies are doing big stuff physically. So I switched that around. The opposite is I can easily run 12 miles and do a tough motor if I just prep a bit for it and say I'm going to do it. You know, so right then, within five minutes of him asking me to do it, I emailed him back and said, dude, I'm signing up. I signed up for it and I wish I would have grabbed the picture for it, but I did the tough motor. I did it insanely well. I finished before my buddy who came in and asked me how to do it and I didn't train that much. That's the whole thing. Like I had this huge belief that I had to, that I had to do all this tons of training because I don't really run much. I don't run at all. 
Um, I thought that I had to do all this training to, 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 to do Tough Mudder, right? Literally, guys, I ran five times. I ran five times. And, I, and for me, I went out there and crushed it. I mean, I did really, really great. So now I know without a shadow of a doubt that I can push myself further, further on that physical stuff. And every time you get past these limiting beliefs, it opens up the world to you and you recognize those limiting beliefs quicker and you can squash them quicker. So after you reverse it, <clears throat> after, after, you, after you ask the question, what would the opposite thought be of that limiting belief? Then question number five is, and this is the one that I added to Byron Katie's because I really feel that, that this one's important. How does that opposite feel make you think? <laughs> how, how does that opposite thought make you feel? Okay, as soon as, I, as soon as I thought this, right, as soon as I thought this, I can easily run 12 miles and do a Tough Mudder if I just prep a bit for it and say I'm going to do it. As soon as I thought that, everything felt lighter. That, that feeling in my gut went away because there was no more uneasiness. There was confidence in there. Um, and once again, the, the, light, the lightness really comes in. You can feel that physically in your gut. And I felt like this, right? Like when, whenever, you're, <clears throat> whenever you reverse and limiting belief, you feel like this guy. Like you, like you just climb this mountain and you're standing on top of the world and you can just dominate anything. Because once, once you have this power to identify what's holding you back, reverse it in a matter of 90 seconds guys you, you're you're holding your entire life your entire future your families your community's future in your hands because those of us who really take this and run with it and 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 do it and and make it a part of our lives and and say that we don't have to live with beliefs that hold us back okay it's not that we're not going to have them we all have them but we don't have to live with them we don't have to have them dictate what happens in our life we don't have to have our limiting beliefs that we learned growing up that our that our family has for us that, that have transferred over to us that our community has that 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 the news media has put into our minds we don't have to live with those dictating how successful or how happy we're going to le live in our life guys so as you're going through squashing this this through the limiting belief process i'm going to bounce over here to questions here in a bit you're going to come up with these little red flags, okay? So as you're squashing and limiting belief, you're definitely going to come up with these little red flags that pop up. So here's some here's some other offshoot limiting beliefs that popped up in my mind when I started talking about the tough mutter thing. So, okay, so I switched that <clears throat> I switched that belief around. I felt insanely empowered. I signed up for the race, which was the first step making that commitment. But then these little things started to creep in my mind. It's like, yeah, but my hips have hurt in the past and you know that might hold me back, and maybe I'll just <clears throat> maybe I'll just cancel last minute and and not go. Honestly, I had that guys. I had that three weeks before the darn race. I, I thought, man, because you know, I haven't really done any training. Maybe I'll just email them and say that you know my my knees hurt or something like that. And I just won't go. <laughs> you know, I mean, it sounds it sounds insane now after I now after I did the tough mutter. It sounds insane that that was even going through my mind, but it was a limiting belief. Uh, here's another one that I had after I reversed that initial big limiting belief. But when I, but when will I have time to train? You know, I've, I'm running a couple companies. I've got a great family, two kids, and and uh, run our run our entrepreneur group, run the entrepreneur co workspace, do all kinds of stuff. When am I going to have time to train? You know, that popped in my mind. Maybe I'll just do do next year's race instead. Okay, but there's water obstacles on the course. That's one that popped in my mind because there, there's this one water obstacle. And I actually, good thing I read this article yesterday instead of before the, the race that I did. But there was a guy who actually died in a Tough Mudder on this one water obstacle that I was initially scared of. Okay, it's, it's, I'm, I'm not a swimmer. I'm a terrible swimmer. So that was a limiting belief for me. It's like, well, shoot, there's three obstacles on the Tough Mudder that have water. Um, maybe I just shouldn't do it at all. Because they have water, maybe I should just go run a 5K or something, you know. So the every single one of these are things that I had to go through. Every single one of these are things that I had to go through, and and squash the limiting beliefs for. So you'll get these little red flags that'll pop up, and then you take every one of these through that same process. Okay, but my hips hurt have hurt in the past. Okay, I asked the question: Is that true? Of course, you're going to say yes because it has. And then is that beyond? Shout of a doubt, true that my hips have hurt and I can't run again. Well, no, because you know I, I ran last week and my hips didn't hurt, so maybe they won't hurt during the race. And same thing, run run through those five questions with every single little uh, offshoot uh, limiting belief that pops up to really blast through. For me, with the water one, with the water one, uh, you know, we ask the question, and you know, has anyone ever gone through? For me, the the second question was, 
the, the, the beyond a shadow of a doubt one was, has anyone ever gone through the Tough Mudder that didn't know how to swim? You know, of course, the answer is yeah. I guarantee people have gone through the Tough Mudder that didn't know how to swim because I Googled it. And people said that they didn't know how to swim and they did the Tough Mudder. So I'm like, well, well, shoot, other people have done it. And how did they do it? Well, they just skipped the obstacle. Okay, so that's what I did. I did the whole Tough Mudder except for that one obstacle. I just went around it and I felt great about it because I had a huge, huge accomplishment and I didn't let that one thing hold me back. So a rule of thumb when you're going through this whole process, guys, is if it feels light, it's right. Okay, as soon as you reverse that limiting belief to an empowering one, one that empowers you to go out there and do it. Once again, that water one was a huge limiting belief for me and still is uh, for certain things. But I reversed it. I said, heck, other people have done it. All I got to do is go around that obstacle. I'm good to go. Now, now, I, now I didn't feel uneasy about the race. Okay, so as soon as it feels light, it's right. When it's heavy, you know that there's an issue there. So we need to live from an empowered belief state of mind. And, and now, now it's your turn, guys. So have you identified some of your own limiting beliefs yet during this call? I hope you have. I, I hope you guys have been writing stuff down. I hope you've been thinking of certain things. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you. And this, this takes courage and it takes guts. It's something that I had to go through. Someone challenged me to do this. And initially I'm like, ah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to tell you my limiting beliefs. And that, that's a limiting belief in and of itself. That, that if I tell someone my limiting beliefs, it makes me weak. Okay, so reverse that. If I tell someone my limiting beliefs, it makes me weak. Uh, is that true? Of course, first you're going to say yes. And then is it beyond a shadow of a doubt true that people who had limiting beliefs weren't weak? Okay, of course the answer is yeah. A lot of people have limiting beliefs and share them with people and they're not weak. They're insanely strong. So the opposite of that is sharing my limiting beliefs with other people, with people I don't know even, empowers me and makes me stronger. Okay which it does. I can tell you personally that it does. And then how does that make you feel? It makes you feel insanely light. It makes you feel like you want to share all of the limiting beliefs that you have in your mind with everyone you can, or at least with us here on the call. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to put some of you on the spot. I want you guys to post as many of you who, who can, who, who have the guts, who have the courage to do it, and who, who, who can take on that new belief, that new empowering belief that sharing and identifying your limiting beliefs with other people makes you stronger. Post one or two of your own limiting beliefs in the questions box here in this webinar. And uh, I'm going to pick a couple of them. Let's work on them live here on this call. Let's work on a couple limiting beliefs and, and help you on this call blast through them, guys, okay? Um, because time is short. Time is so short in the whole scheme of things. Um, you know, there's uh, pe young people all the time, people that are in insanely great health that, that pass away way too early that didn't get a chance to live the life they wanted to. Perhaps they had limiting beliefs in their way. Uh, perhaps they perhaps they were holding back on living their dreams. And I'm, hey guys, while I'm saying this, post one or two of your own limiting beliefs in the questions box. Okay, I'm going to bounce out and, and, and dive into to some of them with you guys. But perhaps the, the, the people who, who maybe passed away early and weren't able to experience life um, you know, they had these things holding them back. And if, if, if they would have let them go and really push things forward, uh, and may, maybe they would have lived an epic life or perhaps let all of us who, who are still fortunate enough to, to still be living and experiencing earth and experiencing love and experiencing everything that we experience. What are we right now holding ourselves back on in life? It could be, it could be business. Okay. Maybe there's something around business that, that's, that's holding you back from doing three deals a year to doing 20. Okay. I've talked to several investor care members in the last two weeks to say, man, I'm stuck at six deals a year. I want to get to two deals a month. There's limiting beliefs holding you back, okay? Some people have a limiting belief that doing direct mail is too expensive. What if you switch that around? Has anyone ever done direct mail who didn't have a large budget and made it successful? The answer is obviously yes. Um, what's the opposite of that? Direct mail, when done right, can be cheap and can fuel my business. I know that for a fact. A buddy of mine in South Carolina, uh, many of you know, you might know him. his name, but his name is Patrick. I've known him for years and we used to be business partners and we're still really good friends and we put together a mastermind together. <clears throat> His whole business model, guys, is, re is revolved around cheap direct mail and he does one to two deals a month. Doesn't have a website, okay? Actually, he does have a website. He has a website for building his cash buyer list. But he, for, for his motivated seller leads, he doesn't even use it on site. So that's a limiting belief. So I'm gonna hop over here, guys. Kurt, I did get it, man. So 
Um, I did get the email about the social media. We're going to share it. So we're going to share it on our blog and on our Facebook, and I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so Ryan, so Ryan's mentioning earlier that when I was going through those things earlier, that uh, one of his limiting beliefs was it takes money to make money. Man, that's that's one that I, w I would venture to say that almost everyone has because because our upbringings our upbringings teach us that, you know, our, our upbringings teach us that that you got to have money to make money because that's what the news says all the time. That's what that's what people who don't have money tell you, and most people don't have money, right? So we're listening. We're we're, we're getting these beliefs from people who themselves have that belief and they pass it on to us, whether it's good or bad. So it takes money to make money. I had the same thing. You know, it, it took me a year and a half when I was in college to, to get past that hump of several limiting beliefs that I was too young, that no one, that no one would take me seriously. Um, I didn't have this system then. I had to hack my way through and I just, I just had to like, you know, pull up my shorts and, 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 and grip my teeth and go do it. I didn't have this quick process to squash that limiting belief right away. Um, too young. I didn't have money. I didn't know how to do a deal. I didn't think people would take me seriously. I'd never done a multifamily deal ever. And that was the first deal that I was trying to go do. Like I had all these beliefs. You take them through the process, you work them around and you know, Ryan right there, it takes money to make money. Have people ever had zero money and ended up a billionaire or ended up a millionaire or ended up just making a great income? Answer is hundred percent. Yes. So if someone else can do it, there's no reason you or I or anyone else in this call can't do it, okay? It's just a matter of flipping that belief around and going out there and finding the right resources to make it happen. So John had one. Uh, I'm not a techie. So once again, I think these are coming through from, from the list. I, I've got some awesome ones coming in here, guys, and I'm going to look through. Um, awesome. These are good. So John uh, uh, says, I'm not a techie. We have a lot of investor care members who that is a limiting belief. We even have some people who cancel. Because, you know, they say, man, I'm not a techie. Um, the thing is, <clears throat> ha has anyone ever not been a techie and been successful using the internet? I've got some, I've got some great, well, myself, guys, when I, when I first found the internet, I was not a techie and, and I didn't have money. I didn't have money to pay a techie. Okay. So for me, I had to go out there and learn some of it, make just enough money to then start hiring people. I'm still not a techie. I just know enough to get me in trouble. Um, but I know a lot of people who, who make $10 million or more or more using the internet that don't know how to set up a web page, don't even know how to post a WordPress blog post, okay? So these people, somehow they're able to make huge incomes using the internet, using a very technical thing when they themselves do not know one thing about technology. Um, I, I One thing I get a lot of people asking me is, is how did you grow a software company? And when, you, know, are you, you must be a programmer, right? I'm like, no, I've never programmed a line of code in my life. Um, but that was a, a, an issue for me when I, when I was looking at starting this company. Well, shoot, I don't really know anything about programming. Of course, I can hire someone, but how am I going to manage that person if I don't know what they're doing is right? So I had to flip that around. The way I flipped it around was, was the empowering statement was there are lots of awesome techies out there who can do great stuff for me for an affordable price. Okay. That right there, guys, that, that makes it light for you, John, to where now you don't have to be a techie. All you have to do, all you have to do is you have to know where you want to go, and then you have to find the right people or system, which both of that, you know, we've got all that in Investor Carrot um, to, to do it for you. And you can just focus on what you do. Um, so Ken, yes, the belief that the best market to do deals has passed. Man, th th this one comes up all the time. And the funny thing is you'll see you'll see real estate education courses all the time saying now is the best time to invest in real estate. Right, like all the time. So in 2006, you saw the courses saying now is the best time to invest in real estate. In 2009, after the crash, now is the best time to invest in real estate. What, what you need to do is take that through the process. So, is has the best time, uh, has the best market to do deals passed? You can say yes because you know the news says that. Is this beyond a shadow of a doubt true? Um, the answer is no because if you look back through history, the real estate market goes through cycles, and in some of the some of the biggest fortunes have been made on down cycles and some of the biggest fortunes have been, been made on up cycles, okay? So fortunes have been made on both sides of the thing. The thing is, you need to flip this around is, is every, every market cycle has opportunities. It's up to me to find the, the great opportunities for profit, okay? So maybe you're just focusing on the wrong type of investing. So yeah, maybe the best market to do short sale deals has passed, but what about multifamily? What about 
What about doing this other type of investing? Or what about focusing on a different niche in wholesaling? Um, what about focusing on, on wholesaling for um, military families? Okay. Um, guys, th th this process is insanely powerful. Okay, so David, great question, man. He says, says not really, but, but, only, but only one is money for marketing to motivated sellers for inventory and private lenders, but I'm currently hiring bird dogs for help. So awesome, man. So, so you've already, so your answer for, for getting motivated seller leads is hard is to go out there and get bird dogs, right? And that's one thing, guys. We're releasing something here in January. It might be February, our, our bird dog system that's been working really, really well. So hit us up. We're going to be building that into investor care. So Ryan. Ryan has another one, not enough time. Guys, this is one that we all have, uh, that we all come across, so not enough time. Uh, Ryan, do you work, do you work a, a full-time job? Like, are you working a job outside of what you do right now? Okay, so yeah, so Ryan works works a job, and uh, do you have a family too? Or, you know, whether it's kids or uh, a spouse or anything like that? I'm just trying to get the, okay, so, that, so that's one biggie. So, so let me take this one step further, Ryan. So I'm, gra I'm glad I'm glad you said that. Okay, so so Ryan says not enough time, and uh, he does have a full time job, and and he's not he doesn't have a spouse or family yet. So what we're gonna do there is same thing. Uh, do do I have enough time to 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 hit these goals in real estate or to do whatever it is that you don't have enough time for, whether it's whether it's working out or whatever. The answer, of course, is yes, because you're like, yeah, of course, I believe I don't have enough time. That's why I haven't done this yet. So then is that beyond a shadow of a doubt true? So have people ever had full-time jobs and became successful real estate investors or became successful in whatever it is that, that you're looking to do? The answer is obviously yeah. Um, and taking it one step further, have people with a lot less time than I have ever been successful doing the exact same thing that I'm looking at doing? And the answer, of course, is yes. Look at people who, I've, I, I've got a friend who has four kids, okay? He he was a VP, he was a VP at uh, at Mercedes-Benz in, in Australia, and he was like the, the big salesman guy who they brought in to, to bring back their, to bring back their, um, uh, their franchises that weren't doing so well, okay? So he had a 60-hour week job, he had four kids, he got paid 300k a year, so the money part wasn't an issue. But he had no time, and he wanted to get out of that rat race. He wanted to make more money, but he wanted he wanted the freedom so he could spend more time with those four kids. So, what he did was he found out a way to, to make himself more time, right? And he set a very specific, very specific timeline, saying, "I'm going to hit this for two years. I'm going to work my butt off for these two years. I'm going to carve out time, cutting away things that 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 don't matter to me as much as this goal." And I'm going to make it happen. So what is the opposite of I don't have enough time? I've got a ton of time that, that I can leverage. I just need to cut out the fat. I just need to cut out the things that, that aren't getting me in life where I want to get them. Cancel cable TV. Maybe don't go out with friends a couple times. You know, Cut that back until you hit your goals. I'm not saying to eliminate it, but cut it back a little bit. Um, stay up later. You know. Uh, that, that's that's what I had to do when I was growing my company because I was I was doing full time consulting during the day, but I hated it. Um, and uh, at night, I you know I'd, I'd get home at six o'clock, make dinner, uh, run up and and do a quick workout. So I, you know at eight o'clock, I'd be be done with all that stuff. Then I'd work from eight o'clock till midnight, sometimes eight o'clock until two in the morning, and I would get back up and and start to work at nine in the morning. Was that a grind? Yeah, did, did, did it suck at the time? And and it felt like all I was doing was just going through the cycle? Yeah, but if I didn't do that, if I didn't carve the time out and turn around that not enough time um, limiting belief, I wouldn't be where I am now, to where I have a lot of time. I have, you know, I'm, I, I did a blog post yesterday on my personal blog on trevormock.com that talks just about this, where, you know, at one point in my entrepreneurial journey, I thought it was cool. I thought it was like a, a badge of honor to to work a lot, to say that I was working on a Saturday morning when everyone else was sleeping, right? That, that like I was hustling harder than other people. Now, um, I have an abundance of time. I make more money than I did before. I work less than I did before. Uh, I just work smarter. So yeah, just tr turn that thing around, man. You've got plenty of time. You just need to focus on the right things. And have that belief uh, reversed, and, and get rid of some of the things that, that are that are cutting into that time. 
Um, yeah, so Ryan, awesome. So Roy, man, this, this is a good one. So Roy's saying, I had a very successful business that went bust in the crash of 2008. If I had, uh, if I start a new business tied to real estate, the same thing could happen again. This is my limiting belief. Um, same thing. I've got a buddy who he had a really big real estate business. They were doing, you know, he, he did several hundred uh, deals and uh, had millions of dollars in the bank account. Okay, and same thing happened, dude. He, he went, he had foreclosures happening. He had a couple lawsuits. He had eight hundred thousand dollars in cash go out of his bank account in one month like negative cash flow in one month. Um, and uh, essentially, I mean, he ended up broke out of that. And he, and now he's, he restarted his real estate business this year. And he's working less than he was before. He's a lot less stressed because they're doing different types of deals in a different way. And he's only working on the stuff in his business he likes to do. He has other people who went through the same thing with their other with their businesses. Like one guy loves negotiating, so he goes out and negotiates all the deals. This guy, my friend, does all the marketing. That's what he likes to do. This other guy likes to sell the deals. So they, the three of them just work on what they like to do. They're each making more net income than they were before. And each one of them had, had big failures in the last real estate market. So same thing. Is this beyond a shadow of a doubt true that if you start a new company that it will happen again? Um, or I guess I guess not that. Is it beyond a shadow of a doubt true that other people who had businesses fail during that same crash have not gone out and, and started, a, a started a successful company that did not fail. So what, what you need to do is then reverse that and say, um, I've learned from my, I've learned from the mistakes in the crash and, um, and the next business I start is going to be stronger. The foundation is going to be much stronger and my business model is going to be protecting me from, from having that same thing happen again. Okay. So now it feels a lot more light. It feels way lighter that now, okay, you know what you did wrong in the last one. And you know what you need to fix. And you know you know what you're not going to do again when you start this business. Okay. So just figure it out where, where those missteps were in your other business and, and get rid of them. And just don't do that again. With, with, with my friend, his thing was they, they were way over leveraged. They were doing too many deals. They had five or six rehabs going at once. Um, they would be you know doing one deal and then getting the cash out of that one, doing another deal. So when, when one or two deals fell, fell down, then everything started to crumble. Everything started to, to, to domino effect. Now his business is built in a different way. Uh, Gary, I, I work a lot of long hours in my full-time job that prevent, prevents me from time in, uh, investing in real estate. Same thing, Gary, that, that I was talking about with Ryan earlier. Um, so there's a couple limiting beliefs there. One of them is you don't have enough time, and, and the other one is that, that investing in real estate takes a lot of time. So there's two limiting beliefs there at work. So the one that, that you don't have enough time, the same thing I walked Ryan through um, before, that we've all got time, guys. We just need to cut out the stuff that, that's less important. Okay, Cut out the Facebook, cut out the TV, cut out uh, the things that, that aren't important. Okay, And we, we've all got the time. Um, and heck, if, 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 you really, if you really truly have this passion, have this goal that you know you want in life, and your job's holding you back, maybe that's a limiting belief right there, that you can't find another job that gives you more flexibility. Um, or that there's not another side business you can create to, to get some income coming so you can start doing real estate investing more. So there's all kinds of limiting beliefs at play here, Gary. The job, that, that I can't go out and find another job uh, that gives me more, more flexibility, the not enough time, and then that real estate investing takes a lot of time. Okay. So once again, uh, my buddy who who uh, restarted his business after it failed, he maybe spends three or four hours a week on his investing in his investing business, and they do one to two deals a month. Okay, uh, the, their last their last wholesale deal they netted twelve grand. So it's it's just a matter of busting through those limiting beliefs that real estate investing has to be hard, real estate investing has to be complicated, real estate investing has to uh, take a lot of hours. Um, all this kind of stuff. And I think one of the big things that, that people sink a lot of hours into with real estate is they, they spend too much time, and I'm saying this from experience, they spend too much time online Googling around looking looking for stuff, trying to learn more techniques instead of out there hitting the pavements, talking to people, stuff like that. Um, do, 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 do. 
you, you, you want to know a great example, Gary? So I j just thought of this. There's, I don't remember the name of this TV family, but there's this TV family. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the, the Duggars or something like that, I think. And they have like 21 kids or something, right? I mean, they have this TV show, uh, they have 21 kids or 20 or 19, or whatever. It's a lot of kids. Okay. They live in this big house. Um, and, and, and the, all, all of the, all of the kids that, that are old enough to work and the dad, they're all self-employed, right? They all work for themselves. The dad owns commercial real estate. That's one of his investments and he does some other things. So if this guy, if this guy with, you know, of course, if he has 19 kids now, and of course some of the kids help with stuff, but he has 19 kids to care for and provide for. If he can carve the time out to do some real estate deals, man, any of us can, you know? So that right there is like a great opposite of that limiting belief. Okay, there's people with a lot less time than me that make this happen. I just need to find where the time is, make it a priority, and streamline my real estate business. So I'm focusing on things that that give me the most leverage with the least amount of time. Awesome. Well, cool guys. If there's any more popping through there, we're al we're almost uh, we're almost done with this puppy. But so so what do you what do you want to accomplish this next year, guys? Think of that. Write this stuff down. If you haven't already, you know the, the beginning of the year is is the perfect time to be really charting out your goals. Write them down, put them on the wall. Don't just think about them, okay? Be specific. Write your goals for um, financial, for business, for spiritual, for emotional, for uh, relationships, for health, for education. Write all of your goals and all of your aspirations for this next year, this next three years, whatever it is, down on a piece of paper, post them on the wall, okay? So now you know what you want to accomplish. And then go through the ones that are the most important for you and ask yourself, why haven't I accomplished this, this goal yet in my life? Okay, why are you putting that goal for next this next year and why didn't you hit it last year? Guys, I've got goals that, that honestly have carried over for two or three years straight that I said, okay, this year I'm going to hit that. The health and fitness one for last year, I, I was better you know, than I have been in the past, but I, I wasn't anywhere near where mentally I, I wanted to be. So that's one thing that's carrying forward. And I, and I ask myself, like, why haven't I accomplished that yet? And I have all these excuses. Same thing, time, you know, um, I don't want to go out and, and work out by myself. And all my buddies have regular jobs, <laughs> like all this stuff. But then you reverse it and, and you, you dive into really what the root cause of why you haven't, why, why I haven't hit those yet. And it's really funny stuff. You know, it's funny little things. And all those limiting beliefs are just totally stupid. Okay, so next, once again, identify the beliefs that are holding you back right now from living that life, right now from living the life that you want to be living this next year. What is holding you back from doing those two deals a month? Is it seller leads? And then start looking at those, at, at those limiting beliefs there. Okay, well, you know, yeah, motivated seller leads is what's holding me back, but, but um, you know, it's hard to get motivated seller leads. Okay, then you need to go through that with these five questions. And keep on working your way back, guys, until the whole situation feels light in your gut and you can you can move forward uh, confidently. And like I said, take them through these five simple questions. So if you weren't able to write these down before, write them down now. So first of all, is this belief true? Ask yourself that. Second, is it beyond a shadow of a doubt true? Has, has anyone ever in the history of the world <laughs> ever been in the same situation as you and did what you're wanting to do successfully? And the answer is 99.9% .9 yes most of the time. Unless you're honestly doing something that the world has never seen before. Okay. If, if you're launching a rocket to Pluto, uh, you probably should have some limiting beliefs because no one's ever done it before. <laughs> okay. But if you're the second guy who success, who if one person already did it and you're the second person who tried to do it, then you know it can be done. Okay? You, you just need to figure out the steps to get there. How does this make you feel? How does this limiting belief make you feel? If it makes you feel bad, if it makes you feel unconfident, if it makes you have this pit in your stomach, then you know it's a limiting belief. You know that's holding you back. Okay, so for me with the Tough Mudder thing, once again, um, I, had, I had heard of the Tough Mudder before he came to me, but I, I didn't think that I could do it, um, honestly. You know, so, so every time I thought about it, I'm like, man, that would be cool, but uh, maybe, maybe, I'll do, maybe I'll do the small one, like the, the one that's a 5K, the the mud run or whatever they call it, you know, and that made me made me feel like crap because I'm 
I'm an athletic guy, but I haven't been in the last few years as, as athletic as I want to be. And it made me feel like crap. So what would the opposite of that be? Switch that around. Make that make that uh, an empowering belief. Okay, once again, my, my one from, from the Tough Mudder that I can't run 12 miles because I've never done it before. Because I'm not a runner. I never have been a runner. The opposite of that is if I just prepare a little bit, I can do the 12 miles easily. Right? And how does that make me feel? It makes me feel awesome. Because now I'm envisioning myself going through and doing that and achieving that. So write those down, guys. Put them on a piece of paper. Put them on your wall. Put them on your desk. Put them wherever. So you ingrain them into your mind. So they just become second nature. You come across something that's holding you back. Is this belief true? Well, yeah, I think it's true. But, you know, obviously obviously it's probably not. So let me go to question number two. Is it beyond a shadow of a doubt true? Has anyone ever in the world done what I'm wanting to do? Well, yeah. Yeah, people have definitely lost 100 pounds in a year. Um, people have definitely gone from zero deals to um, you know, doing a lot of deals quickly. I've, I've got a buddy of mine, his name is Carlos, and you can look him up online. He's in all kinds of magazines and stuff in the real estate world now. But he started investing in 2008, and he had never done a multifamily or commercial deal in his life. He's from, he's from Brazil originally, so he's an, an immigrant. He has a thick accent. Um, he was in New York. Uh, once again, he, he had never done any uh, uh, commercial deals in his life. He lived in New York, and he came up with this thing. He said, I want to I own 2,000 multifamily units within two years. I'm sure there's a – if you think of that right now, like if, if, if you think of that thought, if, if you had to say to yourself, I'm, I'm going to own 2,000 multifamily units within two years, how many limiting beliefs does that bring up for you? Probably like 50. Right, so the same thing happened to him, and he he went one one by one went through them and squashed them. You know, one well, there are are the big banks going to take me seriously? If, I, if I'm trying to take down, if I'm trying to take down 150 unit deals that are seven million dollars or that are three million dollars, I, I don't have the money for it. So there's a limiting belief he had to go through and squash. Um, and where am I going to get the money? Well, banks or private lenders. Well, how, how are they going to? trust me or think I'm credible if I've never done 150, I've never done even a two unit apartment deal in my life. Like these are things he was, he was thinking. So how does he get, get, get past that? Um, long story short guys, Carlos did the research. So one, one of his, one of his, uh, limiting beliefs was I'm in New York and there's no way I'm going to be able to, to, to get 2000 units because I'm in New York. Everything's too expensive. So what did he do? He said, well, um, there are other, his, his reversal was, there are some insanely great in real estate investing markets for multifamily around the country. I just need to do the research and find the right one to focus on. He did. He narrowed it down to D.C. and Houston, Texas. Within um, uh, six months or so, he moved to Houston, Texas. He picked up and moved based on the limiting belief, guys, that, that he couldn't do. He couldn't get to 2,000 units in New York because everything is too expensive. He picked up the move to the market that he did the most re that he did the research on and said, this is the one I'm going to hit hard. I'm going to focus on this until I get 2,000 units in two years. And he did it. He owns almost 3,000 units now, guys. Multifamily units in Texas. Um, starting from scratch as an immigrant with broken English, with never doing a multifamily deal in his life. And he started taking down 150-unit apartment complexes um, with no money. Um, I mean, guys, it's crazy. Crazy, crazy what the human mind can hold us back from, and it's crazy what the human mind can empower us to do when, when we do it right. So it takes courage and vulnerability to really realize uh, what you've held as true for so long and what's holding you back right now, and even more courage like we've done to confront those beliefs and turn them into empowering beliefs and thoughts. So action steps, guys, write down those five questions. Uh, for the next 30 minutes after this call, please don't get up and like hop into Facebook or hop into something else. Write down your big goals for this next year if you haven't already. And write down, write down some of the reasons why you haven't reached those specific goals yet in your life up to this point. Hint, those are likely limiting beliefs. You need to explore them using those five questions. And then bust through those limiting beliefs and do this every single day whenever that doubt creeps into your mind with anything. Okay? Yeah, I, I, I can't wake, I can't get up and, and work out this morning because I stayed up too late. You know, well, has anyone ever worked out and, 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 uh, been physical if they got two hours of sleep? Well, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I can take a nap afterwards. Right. So guys, start leveraging your, your carrot system today. Hit us up, um, with, with emails, of course, uh, 
and I hope you guys enjoyed this call. Um, yeah, so Carlos's full name is Carlos Vaz. His website is Conti.org, C-O-N-T-I-O-R-G dot com, I think. But uh, yeah, awesome dude, and uh, and he he's a great example for me. I've actually invested with him. He he's he's a great example for me that um, that uh, that you can do whatever the heck you put your mind to as long as you get those limiting beliefs out of your way. Okay, there's no way Carlos could have done that if he honestly believed that he couldn't get the money to fund a 150 unit deal because he'd never done a deal before. Okay, so what's standing between you and your goals? What's standing between you? How did he get the funding? Lots of different ways. <laughs> so he, I mean, it's, this is a whole nother call. Uh, actually, it's, it's kind of funny. Actually, we, in, in, when was this? In 2010, the only event that I've ever done, we, we did one event. It was an awesome event in Denver called Getting the Money. And uh, we had 120 people there or someone. We had uh, five or six of our friends, our investor friends there speaking that are not gurus. They don't teach anything. They just invest. And Carlos was one of them. So we've got his 45-minute session, his video, walking through how he does his deals, where he gets his money, how he structures them, and how he started. Um, I, I don't own the, I don't own the rights to the course anymore, but we've still got the course. It's of the whole event. It's like two or three hundred bucks that we were selling it for. If you're wanting access to that, email me, and I'm sure I can somehow find a link to to purchase it from uh, my buddy Patrick, who now owns the whole business, but. The way he got way he got his money was multiple ways. So, um, hard money uh, for for a hunk of it, private money. You know, he, he would put together a syndication and uh, syndicate multiple uh, private lenders together. And like I said, he would have private money for part of it. Oftentimes, he would have hard money for a hunk of it. The hard money was usually a a, a twelve to eighteen month note that then he had to refinance out, and he'd be refinancing with. Uh, uh, Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, whatever one focused on multifamily most. Um, and every now and then he was able to get the bank that actually some of these properties were short sales from the bank. And he was often able to get the bank to carry back a part of the note as well. So he would get really creative with it. And that's the thing, guys. You need to go out there and squash these limiting beliefs. Like even in that question there, how did he get the funding? Um, there's a limiting belief behind that. Because if you're asking how he got the funding, odds are you're probably going, man, you know, uh, I don't know how that would happen. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I could do that. You know, I could be wrong with you, Rebecca, but I know I, I know I think of those things. I know I thought of the same thing when, when he's telling me that he's taking down these deals. I'm like, dude, how are you? <laughs> where'd you get the money to do that? How how a bank lend you three million dollars on a 150 unit property when when you had never done a deal like that before? You know, it's just a matter of knowing it can be done and being persistent enough to not stop until it, until it happens. So, awesome, guys. Any more questions before we hop off here? If, if there's not, I'll, I'll kind of wait a couple seconds here to see if there's any more questions coming through. But, guys, did, did I guess first of all, is this process something that 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 you think is powerful? Is, is this process something that, that you think you'll be able to use going forward and really give you um, empowerment in your life to really eliminate those those uh, those uh, yeah <clears throat> awesome guys. You're Roy. Great 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 webinar. Uh, thanks for a powerful start to the new year. Awesome Roy. Yeah guys. So so let me know about it. Like I said, I want feedback. So let me know what you thought of this call. Let me know um, uh, if this is a powerful process. Let me know if even during this call did did, did anyone during this call have an epiphany or did, did anyone, anyone during this call blast through a limiting belief that, that you had before coming into the into the call? I, I hope so. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, there's a bunch of yeses coming through. So cool, guys. Well, have an awesome new year, guys. Tackle this year hard. Um, go out there and, and, and make your goals happen. If, if you're an Investor Carrot member, of course, hit us up. Uh, we're here for you. Uh, we've got some really cool updates uh, coming out literally right now. Uh, we have uh, stats are finally coming out in the next week. Uh, we 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 uh, re reviewed the uh, the first version of our website, you know, traffic statistics, 
uh, plugin. So now you're going to be able to get your own website traffic stats on your uh, dashboard of each one of your websites. Our lead pages engine was just updated two weeks ago. We've got our rent to own websites coming out uh, tomorrow. Guys, all kinds of stuff, all, all kinds of progress. We're here for you. If you're not an Investor Carrot member, go to oncarrot.com and uh, and check it out and see if it's the right fit for to help you grow your real estate business. Um, as far as will there be a replay? Yeah, we're recording. We'll get the replay up online probably. Um, yeah, Ryan said. I, I he says I feel like I can get off my butt and get it done now. Thanks, thanks, uh, thank you. <laughs> awesome, man. That that's what this is about, guys. You know, Investor Carrot has nothing to do with with personal growth, right? It has, it has nothing to do with mindset. But that's one thing I'm really passionate about. I'm really passionate about mindset. I'm passionate about entrepreneurship. Um, and, and and that's one one benefit of being an Investor Care member that we keep bringing this stuff to you. We're going to keep on building this into uh, our system. We're going to keep building these trainings in every single month to help empower you both with generating leads online as an investor and uh, living a successful life. So awesome guys. Thank you for hopping on. Have an awesome new year and we'll talk soon.